Well, first of all, I have to say it, it feels fantastic to finally officially and formally be in Australia. I moved here on Tuesday last week. Um, still looking for a place to stay. I'm staying at a hotel for now, but I'm, I moved here and had a chance to do a lot of uh, visits at, at the office, met some stakeholder and uh, did some interviews, as you know, going into this camp. And it just feels so good to, to finally be here, you know, uh, on home soil for a World Cup that's coming next year. So we start there. Uh, secondly, it feels fantastic to be up here in Brisbane. We know we're going to play a game here in the World Cup as well, to be here to to get to know everything from, from the stadium, which is amazing. The pitch was fantastic as well, and, and the setup that we're going to have. So it's important that we get a good feeling uh, when we're here in terms of performances and training and prepare for that World Cup. Uh, and then when it comes to the actual camp itself, as we've always said, adaptable to change is, is a key attribute for us to be successful. Uh, and we've had to adjust a lot of changes this camp. Um, it is what it is with this game. I know Bev sat here earlier on in a, in a press conference talking about all the players that was unavailable, and now I sit here and talk about all the players that's going to be unavailable. So it's just a little bit of a different camp that what we had prepared for. Uh, but maybe then if we adapt to change, we can look at it, OK, it's a chance for us to actually see the investment of the depth in the roster that we've done for the year and a half that's been. This is a great opportunity to actually test that depth of the roster. Um, I just got a note from, from another staff member here that said we have seven starters from the Olympics unavailable for this camp. Um, that's Ellie Carpenter, Rasso, Steph, Catley, Meeks, Chloe, Caitlin and Kaya. All seven starters in the Olympics not available for the game tomorrow. So obviously it's going to be a different type of game, a different type of approach than, than we thought going into this camp. But, you know, we love challenges and we need to adapt to it and, and also test to see the investment in the depth of the roster. Where do we sit? Thanks very much. Um, as we have um, journos in the room, we will start with um, those in the room and then move to those online. And those online, as always, please use the red, raise your hand function and I'll come to you as time permits. Uh, starting from the room, who wants to start off? Uh, I guess I'll start. To, now that you've moved here, where's your, where's your favourite place? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it's funny because all the staff members are, are going off and betting where I should end and they all say this is best and this is best but honestly every place I've been to so far in this country is amazing um, first of all love the coffee culture uh, great coffee all over the place the beaches the scenery uh, I had opportunity to Mel Andrietta my assistant coach that speak highly about Brisbane took me on a, on a little bit of a tour a private tour on, on Sunday when I arrived so I saw all the beautiful places went up to the lookout and, and saw the whole city so uh, there's a lot of favorite places and I haven't even seen, you know, I've seen very small part of the country and I, I can't wait to actually travel around and meet a lot of, of football people in this country. I'd love to, to do that. Uh, and will, will Sam Kerr play tomorrow? If you train good enough today, maybe you should get a spot. <laughs> Seriously, Tony, how, how good is it to have her back in the, in the team, um, Sam? Because obviously, you know, she's been in the outstanding player for you. Yeah. What, what does she do for the story? I mean, what, what I've said this so many times before, the goal scoring is a natural one, right? Everyone talk about her goal scoring and that's, you know, that's just world class. But the other attributes that she, she gives to the team that I don't think she gets enough credit for is her off-ball movement, her willingness to defend for the team. She leads her defense from the front. Everyone knows that we're a pressing team, right? And if you don't have a forward that leads that pressing, you don't get the midfield in the back line to do the same thing. And she's our first defender and our best defender in that sense, her mentality to hunt and press and, and do that. You know, so she's not a lazy forward so that's one thing the other thing is her leadership you know the way she encouraged its team but also set the standards in terms of demanding she's a winner you know she wants to win and she demands high standards around her but in a in a sound way you know in a really good way so that, that's you know I love working with Sam and I'm just thankful to to be here in a team where I have Sam Kerr by my side because she captains this team in in a brilliant way what would she's achieved, do you think, her best um, football skill ever? How, you've seen a lot of players develop great players. Mm -hmm. How do you assess that as a best? You know what impressed me a lot? When, when a player is peaking in a career and they're playing good, whether they win a title or win an individual prize, it can tend to maybe become a bit complacent, you know, and then maybe have a dip and then realise, oh, I need to work hard again to get back up there. Sam have just kept going like this because she's never satisfied. She wants more, you know. She wants to achieve things, but also she also want, always wants to get better. You know, every day, you know, she's looking at clips. She's looking at getting stronger physically. She's looking at her uh, finishing technique. You know, it's all about getting better, and that means I think she, we can still see her go this way because she's not complacent. She wants more. 
Any other questions? Yeah, I'm um, Tony. We saw Courtney Ryan getting treatment sort of to the side away from the group, and um, obviously Mackenzie and Steph all came laps before training. Is there just any uh, sort of specific injury updates that you can give us from the, the camp currently that just trained out there today? Yeah, I'm actually waiting for the, the latest update myself. Tonight I'm going to have a meeting with my Triple SM team. Um, it's a question mark on Vine, so we we played it safe today and did what she needs to do to be available, and then we're going to test her tomorrow to see if she's available off the bench or not. Uh, so I'll get an answer tomorrow when it comes to her. Uh, Steph, I already got an information that she's not available for the game tomorrow. Uh, same goes for, for Mecca. And just like with Courtney specifically, maybe it was something in a higher leg or something like that. Yeah, uh, I don't want to go into details. That's the triple SM expertise, but it's a soft tissue issue. I can say that. That's why I want to play it cautious today to make sure she can potentially recover for tomorrow's game. With, with Canada, um, Tony, obviously they won the Olympic gold. This is you know, the start of a period of windows. You're going to have a league World Cup. Every single player team that's uh, been so um, well performed in recent times. It's going to be a big challenge to break. It right, will. Right it really, it really will. Like I said, the defensive. I mean, look at how many goals they concede, and there's been one of the best defensive team in the world for almost two years now in terms of how many goals they conceded. It's a very few. They work extremely hard as a unit. They won the Olympics by being a very solid defensive team and really good on the breaks. The transition game is, is world class. Um, and even if they're missing some players, it's mostly in the back line. They have a front line and a midfield line that is, is world class. What we feel, to be honest, uh, in the Olympics we felt that we should have been there in the final against Canada. We played a really good semi-final against Sweden. We disappointed that we came home empty-handed. And now we get a chance to play that game against Canada that we wanted to play in, in Tokyo. That's kind of how we look at it. So we're extremely motivated to test ourselves against this team. Okay, we're going to go now to the online. Um, we'll start it off with Sam Lewis. Thanks, Anne. Hi, Tony. Uh, you mentioned uh, during the squad announcement that your communication with the public could be a bit better in terms of explaining the purpose of these games. So with that in mind, can you elaborate on what you're going to be working on against Canada and what the public can expect to see? It's a great question. How, mu how much time do we have? But I'm going to try to explain it. Um, what I think I didn't do good enough in the beginning of my tenure as a national team coach was that we had a long-term plan. And one thing that the Federation was clear about when they appointed me was to look at a gap report and create more depth in the roster. Um, we had very few debutants over the last decade, so we needed to invest. We didn't have any youth national team up and running at the time due to COVID, so we need to short track some of those journeys up to the senior national team. You saw a lot of young players, a lot of new players. You saw 17 debutants in, in a year and a half, uh, and the average was two debutants per year for the last decade before that. So it's almost the same amount of debutants as we had in a decade we had in, in 18 months. The other thing we looked at uh, was that we uh, have struggled to play against European teams, but also top-ranked nations. The stats wasn't good. I think it was like 29% winning rate or something like that against top 10 ranked teams over the last decade. So we said we need to train that to be prepared for that quarterfinal, that hurdle that we haven't gone over for, for a long time. And those two processes was a long-term project. Then we did a short-term focus on, on that Olympics. And I'll give you one example, now sorry for this long answer, but if you prepare for a Nation Cup, for example, you want to play the similar type of teams that you're going to face in a Nation Cup to win, but we felt we didn't have time to do that because we wanted to play Brazil and the US leading into the Asian Cup. So maybe in the short term, we sacrificed some of the focus on in going into the Asian Cup, but we wanted to benefit something in the long term. Another example is that Spain camp when we went with a, a weaker team, a less experienced team for different reasons to protect some, some well-being of players. We knew it was going to be a tough thing and some people might think it's unfair to those players, but it's exactly what those players need to get exposure of the, the top international level. Then we said, let's draw a line in the sand. We do a year and a half. A year out for the World Cup, we said, we need to narrow in. Because I know from experience that player availability and consistency in lineup is key to win tournaments. England, for example, in the Euros now, same starting lineup every single game they win the Euros. So consistency and continuity is now the key from now on to the World Cup, which is a completely different focus than the last year and a half. Unfortunately, for different reasons, I sit here now like, like Bev did and say I have a lot of plays unavailable. So instead of, instead of maybe doing what we, what we aim to do coming into camp, but that's football, you know? Um, and 
this is also a part of it. You know, you need a roster to be able to perform in the tournament. So what we want to do now against Canada is to see how far are we in that process when we now na narrow down our focus to see is these things in place that we're prepared for and Canada's going to be a really good challenge to see where we're at with that. All right, um, Adam Peacock. Hey Tony, um, go back 12 months, you mentioned there about depth and it seems to be a recurring theme but now time to perform, to help you perform that number six role. So you go back 12 months, there's no Gorry, there's no Wheeler or Wheeler is an emerging player. How do you feel about that area of the park given how important it is both with and without the ball right now? Yes, actually everyone that's seen how we play or try to play, we, we're in a very attacking minded team and, and a friend of mine said way back in my coaching career and I love that quote, I'm going to steal it from him, he said tell me who your number six is and I'm going to tell you your playing style. And if you look at the type of number six that we looked on the last 12 months, we haven't looked at a, a warrior or a ball winner in there, we've looked at a quarterback. You know, every, every time we tried something, Kara Kunikross, for example, EDE, uh, Wheeler, uh, even though she's a really good ball winner as well, Mini, who's normally like a 10 kind of player, attacking midfielder, playing as a six, it's because it's how we want to play. We want to dominate the games with the ball, uh, not having too much possession, but we want to penetrate and break lines and attack. But you need a six that can be that, that quarterback and that engine in the heart of the team. And I won a mini already in Asian Cup. Unfortunately, I couldn't get her in due to, to the circumstances with COVID and her baby. Um, now she's back and playing maybe the best football of her career. Um, you know, I went watching her visit her in, in Sweden as well and see what she's doing in Clubland and, and she's just been amazing. You know, that first half against Spain as well, one of the world's most technical teams. She could play in any position in that team. She's been, been outstanding. So I'm, I'm extremely happy about what Mina's giving this team because it's almost like that final piece of the puzzle in the center of the park that we need to play the way we want to play. Thanks, Vince Rigari. Hi, Tony. Um, World Cup's obviously coming up pretty quickly um, and the couple of years you've been in the chair, obviously in terms of results, have been pretty rocky. So I just wanted to ask you as you sit here today, do you think the Matildas are capable of winning the World Cup next year? And why, regardless of your answer, why? What we've said all along is that we need to control the controllables and the controllables is to work on investment and developing this team to try to make sure every individual and we as a team reach our full potential. And the one thing that we want to make sure is that every time we step onto that park, we inspire. You know, we leave our heart out there, give it all. So everyone that buys a ticket and come watch 90 minute football now or in the World Cup should know what product, product they're going to watch. They're going to watch a team that's going to leave it all out there. We're going to be very aggressive. We're going to be very attacking minded. Some people say we need to, to concede less goals. We say we need to score more than the opponents because that's what this team is about. And then we'll see come the World Cup how far that can take us. Uh, and then it's up to other people outside of our circle to judge whether we're taking it far enough uh, or not. The one thing that I want to add to that answer is I think it's a difference between expectations and belief. When you expect people to do something, you need to base expectation on realistic measure, like a ranking or quality of the team, a team. But when you believe, it means you can achieve something that is more than expected of a team. And the one thing is for certain is I have this job because I believe in this team. And I know the process uh, we're into, the players believe in the process and believe in this team as well. And if we can come to a point where also everyone outside of the circle really believe that these players can achieve something that might not be expected of them, look at what England did in the Euros, for example, with the home nation supporting them. If we can believe, then it's going to be a very, very interesting World Cup. The final part of the answer, you said it's coming up very soon. We actually had a summary the other day with a team and looked at it. Everyone talks about it's, it's almost a year to the World Cup. And we actually broke all the FIFA windows down. We have five FIFA windows and that means we have 46 days. But out of those 46 days, 14 days goes to travel and recovery. That leaves us with 32 days. Out of those 32 days before the World Cup, uh, roster is announced, it's going to be 11 games and 11 pre-game sessions like today. That leaves us with 10 proper training sessions. 10 proper training sessions where we can play 11 11 and work on all our details. That's how soon we're going to announce a, a World Cup roster and coming here and prepare for the World Cup. So it's, it's around the corner. It's around the corner, so every minute counts. Joey Lynch. 
Um, thanks, Sam. Tony, I just want to get back to the answer that you gave Sam there. You talked about wanting to zero in and seeing where you are a year out from this in these Canada games. What does that look like? How will you determine where you are from these games? What do you want to see to figure out that you're on the right track from these Canada games? I want to see what we saw in large chunks against Brazil. I want to see what we saw in the last 30 minutes of the first half against the US. Yes, I know we lost 3-0 in that game, but the first half, after those first 50 minutes, the last 30 minutes of the first half against the US was amazing. We were dominating that game completely. I want to see what we did against New Zealand, but I want to see us doing that against a better team. Uh, against New Zealand, there were a lot of the things that that was starting to, to come into, you know, we were we, we were who we want to be, we played the way we want to be, uh, you know, a lot of variations, central combination, wide combination, transition, controlling the game, but also high pressing with transitions. We were brilliant on set plays, which we've been in a while now. We've been actually really, really good statistically wise on attack set plays. But I want to see us do all that against a world class team like Canada. And I want to see it in longer spurts of a game, not just 50 minutes here and five minutes here. I want to see a solid performance over, over 90 minutes. We know that it's ebb and flows in every game. It's not going to be perfect in 90 minutes, but that's what I would like to see against Canada. Chris Goldman. Hi, Chris. Okay, we're moving on. Final question, final two questions from the room. Um, yeah, Tony, um, now that you've moved you know, um, and have to on a, a solid base here, yeah, how closely are you going to be watching the, the A-League this year, and especially players like a trainer who have elected to use the A-League as part of their process and build up to the World Cup? How closely will you be watching um, the league, attending the games, and what do you say to the players that have chosen to use the league in Australia as part of their build up to the World Cup? Yeah, obviously we've been tracking every single player in the A-League even when I haven't been here because I have an amazing staff of, of scouting people and assistant people that's been around and watch game lives and even if I haven't been here live I have watched every every player a lot. That's also why we've seen a lot of the A-League players actually coming into the national team environment to see if they can take that step. We have experienced that some players have actually it's been a big challenge for them because the tempo of international football is so high um, and it's a huge step. The fact that they're going to play more games is good and important and obviously I'm going to keep track of the, the games coming up what I want to be honest about because I've said it to the players as well is when we narrow in now it's going to be the door is not going to be closed but it's going to be a very small chance to actually break in because I've used 18 months to let people break in and show what they got and now when we narrow in it's going to be a, a small chance to get in here it doesn't mean they should give up the dream and they should fight for it but it, it means the need to perform extremely well uh, in order to get an opportunity into the national team. But I'm definitely going to keep an eye on the performances, for sure.